Will the spider bite the phenom or lay an egg? Forrest is going to get rich or die trying, and Bader doesn't need sticks and stones to break bones. This is the Fight Network's preview of UFC 126. Hey there, Fight fans. Welcome to the Fight Network's preview of UFC 126. I'm John Pollock. In just a few minutes, John Ramdean is going to be here as we break down the entire card set for Las Vegas, Nevada this coming weekend, which is going to feature two of the fastest rising light heavyweights in the organization. Forrest Griffin returns to action after a 15-month layoff, and Anderson Silva attempts to make his eighth middleweight title defense. The main event Saturday night features middleweight champion Anderson Silva defending his gold he won back in October of 2006 and who holds a perfect record of 12-0 inside the octagon, meeting the phenom Vitor Belfort. Considered by many as a prodigy, the questions surrounding the 19-8 Belfort always come back to which Belfort will show up as his quest to capture UFC gold will come to a culmination at UFC 126. Knowing how intelligent Anderson Silva is, um, He's, um, he's the type of guy that, that you know, doesn't make the same mistake twice. And uh, I know he's part, he trained with Vitor before many times, so I gave him that edge. I trained with Vitor Belfort, and there's never been, been someone I've trained with that I've been so impressed with. His speed, his accuracy, everything. But the one the thing with him is just what, what Vitor shows up, you know, what kind of, like, how, how strong he is mentally. He's got a good winning streak going ahead, but, you know, I, I like Vitor just from from training with him in the past and knowing what he, he's capable of. Yeah, these fights are real interesting. Anderson and Belfort, I think it's a 50-50. Before it's tough, before it's good, no, Anderson is good too, Anderson is the champion. And this fight, I don't know, all, 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 all is possible to happen, no? I think he's a 50-50, don't have one, one favor, no? What makes a legend? Is it will, determination, or an impressive list of defeated opponents? Two thousand and six was the year in which the reign of dominance would commence, and five years later, the Spider has created a legacy. After posting twelve consecutive victories, earning seven successful title defenses, and unifying the UFC and Pride FC one hundred and eighty-five pound titles, though the champion has faced his fair share of criticism due to unmotivated performances, the Black House member continues to dazzle fans and peers alike. É com o Anderson Silva está muito bem. Vai ser muito difícil alguém ganhar do Anderson Silva hoje em dia. O Anderson Silva estava assim, ó, impressionante. Nós lutadores sabemos como é difícil subir no ringue ali, fazer o que tem que fazer na hora. A gente treina, 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 mas na hora ali o que ele faz é impressionante. After dispatching all comers, a tough challenge in the form of Chael Sonnen stepped into the octagon for the first time in Silva's career. The seemingly untouchable champion participated in a grueling beatdown. Whether it was through will or determination, the middleweight kingpin once again proved his worth in the final minutes of the fifth round. Over 10 years ago, a young athletic fighter out of Rio de Janeiro entered into a world filled with traditional martial artists and barroom brawlers. This youngster made quick work of his opponents, thus earning him the nickname the Phenom. Though Belfort reached success at a young age, he would suffer a personal tragedy that would rock his foundations. Following the incident, his professional career would suffer. His mental state would be affected, and Belfort developed pre-fight anxiety. Such was the case in his bout with Dan Henderson. However, he would eventually find spiritual refuge that would allow him to turn his life around. Religion has been good for him, and, and, and it keeps him focused and, and makes him realize what it is, what's important in his life. You know, and, and sealing his legacy, God and his family are those things. In 2007, under the Cage Rage promotion, this would be the first appearance of the refocused fighter. He's winning the stand up. Oh, it makes sense. Up cup, Look at that. That's it. The old Vitor isn't back. It's a new Vitor, an improved Vitor. Oh, that was oh, his oh, oh, oh. What a combination. Terry Martin is out. That's it. Vitor Belfort, the return of the Phenom. Since the drop down to middleweight, the improved Phenom has finished all of his fights in impressive fashion and proved that there's still dynamite in his hands. So, this is a win win situation from no matter. Oh, my God. That went oh, down. That left hook. Everybody's wanted to believe in him for so long, and uh, it's, he's come back and he's proven himself. He's going to change the whole division of the 180 pound, you know, point as far as being a world champion. You know, I think there's only one fight out there that the fans want to see right now at, at that division, and that's him and Anderson. It is a long-awaited challenge that is sure to motivate both Belfort and the current middleweight king. Belfort is mentally prepared. He has an opportunity to capture his second UFC championship. 
while Silva aims to raise the bar for what it means to be a champion. Though both men have shown will and determination in different ways throughout their careers, the one who shows it the most in the octagon will be victorious on Saturday night. Joining us now to break down UFC 126, he is John Ramdeen and the main event, Mr. Ramdeen, you can't see him, but you can see Anderson Silva taking on Vitor Belfort this Saturday night. Let's first chat about Anderson Silva. His last trip inside the octagon against Chael Sonnen took more shots in that fight than his previous 11. What kind of Anderson Silva do you expect this time? Because that fight, he either injured his rib before the fight or in that opening round and maybe wasn't as indicative of what we're going to see this Saturday. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the same thing. Anderson Silva's going to be ready for everything. This guy is considered one of the pound for pound, if not the best pound for pound fighter in the world for a reason. He comes prepared and he knows what type of fighter Vitor Belfort is. This guy's a dangerous guy on the ground standing and Anderson Silva will be ready. Now, Vitor Belfort, this is a guy I like to compare to with a Ferrari. Looks nice, really fast, but if you're going a long distance with, not the best vehicle. Would that be a good description of Vitor Belfort should this fight get into the later rounds with Anderson Silva? It really depends. You know, we've heard it for years and years which Vitor Belfort is going to show up to the fight, and that's what it comes down to. Vitor Belfort says that he's mentally focused, although we know that's kind of been the chink in his armor over his career. Uh, had an issue with, you know, his sister was kidnapped and she was never ever found, uh, presumed to be murdered, uh, has now since found God and now knows that his job is a professional fighter. He's taking this fight with Anderson Silva very seriously. He's moving around camps. We know that he left Sean Tompkins to try to find the best camp for Vitor Belfort. And I think he'll be ready. I think he's going to bring it to Anderson Silva. And I would bet money that he's going to try to get this fight down to the ground and use the same kind of strategy Chael Sonnen did. Now, you bring up the Sean Tompkins factor, and that did surprise me because Vitor Belfort was someone that it seemed that Sean Tompkins had really tapped into something getting Vitor down to 185 and getting a new lease on his career. And I find it very strange that heading into this fight, he would make such a, a drastic change. And that's what it could come down to. It could come down to mental focus for Vitor Belfort. If he's kind of wavering, maybe we're not going to see the best Vitor Belfort inside of the octagon. And if that's the case, Anderson Silva could exploit a number of Vitor Belfort's weaknesses. Should this become a striking war, who do you give the edge to on their feet? Two very, very prolific strikers. It comes down who can dictate the pace. Anderson Silva known for his counter, uh, counter uh, abilities, whereas Vitor Belfort's a fighter that moves forward and has those piston-like hands. If Vitor Belfort can land one of those shots on Anderson Silva, it could be disastrous. But I think Anderson Silva's too smart, and I think he's going to wait to counter Vitor Belfort, get him into the later rounds, and exploit him. And your pick, Mr. Ramdeen, to I, leave with the middleweight title. Yeah, I think it's going to be Anderson Silva. I think he's too destructive, still one of the pound-for-pound -pound best, and, and there's a reason why he is considered one of the pound-for-pound -pound best. But that doesn't mean that Vitor Belfort can't win this fight. Uh, I'm just picking the spider. In light heavyweight action Saturday night, it's a battle of former title holders. With 17 and 6, Forrest Griffin entering the cage for the first time since November of 2009 as he takes on 28 and 5 Rich Franklin, who has gone 2 and 1, fighting at his new class of 205 pounds. I think the big thing in that is going to be the size, and I think Forrest is just going to be too big and be able to just overwhelm him with his size. You know, they're both kind of gritty fighters, but, you know, anytime you have 15 pounds on top of a fighter, you know, especially at that level, it's, it's going to dictate what happens. Tough call, but uh, I think standing up, uh, Rich Franklin has an edge. He's been, he's, he's looked great. In an interesting light heavyweight showdown, former champion Forrest Griffin squares off against former poster boy and middleweight kingpin Rich Ace Franklin in a bout that could have title implications. Over his 23 fight career, the 31 year old Griffin has defeated some of the best the sport has to offer, including Quinton Jackson, Chael Sonnen, Tito Ortiz, and current 205 pound torchbearer Maurizio Shogun Hua submitting the Brazilian with a rear naked choke. Griffin is one of the biggest men in the division. If he can manage to use his size to wear down the athletic Franklin and force the fight to the canvas, the Robert Drysdale Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt could use his submission abilities to move one step closer to a title shot against a man he has already beaten. Griffin has stated that he has reinvented his game from the ground up and will try to control the clinch game against his opponent. Standing in his way is another star for the Zufa promotion. <laughs> Franklin is one of the most intelligent and well-prepared athletes competing in the sport. Armed with a well-rounded skill set, the Southpaw will look to use speed, movement and accuracy to thwart the attack of his fellow statesmen. After victories over Vanderlei Silva, Matt Hamill and an impressive knockout win over Chuck Liddell, which subsequently sent the Iceman into retirement, the 36-year-old should find himself in title contention if he can emerge triumphant. After sustaining a broken left arm during the Liddell fight, the Ohio native has been out of action since June. 
Now healed and ready to go, Franklin will make a run at the title. Fans are excited to see two of the division's best collide and a bout that could provide fight enthusiasts with the fight of the night. John, this light heavyweight bout, I'm very excited to see. I think it's going to be a very, very good fight stylistically. For Forrest Griffin, we haven't seen him since November of 2009. He had the shoulder problems, and he's readily admitted that he does have a lot of cage rust right now, and that has added uh, a certain nervous factor going into this fight with such a big layoff. Yeah, the thing about Forrest Griffin is, you have to remember, this is a guy that holds victories over Shogun and Quinton Jackson. They might be controversial, but he still holds those wins. So mentally, Forrest Griffin knows that he can hang with any of the top 205-pound fighters in the world. And uh, Rich Franklin stylistically may have the speed, may have the athleticism, but if Forrest Griffin can use his size, get in close and wear down uh, Rich Franklin, I think he can be successful. How would you assess the move of Rich Franklin up to 205 at this point? Again, it comes down to storylines. I love the storylines that can come out of this fight. Rich Franklin uh, has a loss to Leota Machida. If he can come and bring it to Forrest Griffin, utilize his stand-up skills to, uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to take Forrest Griffin out, but if he can punish him and uh, take this fight into the later rounds, I think he could be successful and maybe a shot against Leo to Machida in the could be in the cards. I think it makes sense. I think an X factor as well with Rich Franklin is this is a guy who is extremely mentally tough. We've seen him finish fights with broken hands in his last fight with Chuck Liddell, breaking his arm to finish Liddell. This is someone that is not going to quit mentally in a fight. Absolutely. I think it's the case for both guys, and that's why it's a fantastic matchup with a lot of storylines that could come out of it. So I like to call this the who gets Bones Jones sweepstakes. Is it going to be Forrest Griffin or Rich Franklin? Uh, again, I have no idea, but I'm going to say if Forrest Griffin can keep it standing and wear on Rich Franklin, I think you can get a decision. He got the decision against Quentin Jackson, and of course we're going to see those leg kicks. But if Rich Frank Franklin can use his athleticism, use his movement, and try to wear down Forrest Griffin, he could be successful. And I'm going to say that uh, the size is going to be the factor, and Forrest Griffin will end up getting either a split or a unanimous decision. Jake Ellenberger looks for his third straight UFC victory on Saturday night when the welterweight collides with 9-0 Carlos Eduardo Rocha, who burst onto the scene this past November with a knee bar submission to Chris McRae at UFC 122 in his Octagon debut. Ellenberger enters this fight with a record of 22-5 and, and wins over Mike Pyle and John Howard. Two of the fastest rising light heavyweights in the UFC will meet Saturday night with undefeated Ryan Bader looking to go 13-0 with the tough task ahead of him in the form of 11-1 John Bones Jones. Bader is coming off of his most noteworthy victory with a unanimous decision victory over Antonio Rogerio Noguera at UFC 119, while Jones has stopped his last two opponents, Brandon Vera and Vladimir Matyushenko, in the first round. I just don't think anyone's going to uh, figure out the puzzle of John Jones. He's just he's too creative, he's too explosive, and he, he can finish anywhere. I'm picking him for sure. In a clash of top 10 light heavyweight contenders, the flashy Jackson Winklejohn prodigy John Bones Jones meets unbeaten Arizona-based wrestling standout Ryan Bader, winner of the eighth season of The Ultimate Fighter. The 23-year-old Jones has rapidly become a fan favorite with his crowd-pleasing style, a blend of world-class wrestling and explosive striking. Jones has had an impressive campaign in the Octagon as he easily dispatched several key opponents, including Stefan Bonner, Matt Hamill, Brandon Vera, and Vladimir Matyshenko. While he was disqualified in his destruction of Hamill for illegal 12-6 elbow strikes, he left little doubt about his superiority in the UFC's star-studded 205-pound division. Blessed with natural athletic abilities, Jones turned to wrestling at a young age, and he credits his experience as a national junior college champion for his growth as an MMA fighter. I got made fun of a lot by being a wrestler, and now, you know, my friends watch my fights, and they're like, yo, that was, that was nice. What was that move where you, you slammed them to the floor and like, you held them there? I'm like, oh, that's wrestling, you know? So, um, at the time, uh, as when I was being a wrestler, I didn't realize how dominant it was, but it definitely gave me a lot of comp uh, confidence. Um, knowing that I could wrestle someone down to control a tempo of any type of self-defense uh, situation. Now that I'm MMA, I've embraced it to the fullest. I actually use wrestling to set up other techniques. Those other techniques, which included flying knees, punishing kicks, and razor-sharp elbow strikes, could be his key to victory against a former NCAA Division I wrestler, the caliber of Bader. The 27-year-old former teammate of UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez has amassed his own list of notable victims since joining the Ultimate Fighting Championship, including Eric Schaefer, Keith Jardine, and Antonio Rogerio Noguera. Sharing the criticism of many pundits and observers, Jones weighed in with his two cents on Bader's performance against Noguera, pointing out some holes in Bader's game that he plans to exploit come Saturday night. I agree that Ryan Bader won the fight. I didn't agree with the unanimous decision. And um, in the takedowns, yeah, if you're taking someone down because you obviously have a huge advantage in wrestling and you're not using it, like uh, a lot of times Noguera 
um, defended the takedowns, so those should have been counted. Um, a lot of times Nogueira stood right back up and took zero damage. That should have been taken into consideration. So I do agree that Ryan Bader won because takedowns are controlling uh, the fight. It's being aggressive, it's controlling the octagon, it's, it's dictating the pace, it's, it's controlling the fight. So I do agree, but the um, split decision would have been a little more appropriate, in my opinion. In what is undoubtedly the toughest test of his career, Bader will need to be at the top of his game to counter the offensive onslaught of Jones. He will rely primarily on his wrestling background, but Jones is a talented wrestler himself, which could spell trouble for the undefeated Bader. In order to continue his evolution, Jones acquired the services of TriStar Gym head coach Firas Sahabi, a Muay Thai guru Phil Nurse, and he now also benefits from world-class training partners such as UFC welterweight champion George St. Pierre. Nurse believes Jones' unpredictability in the cage is what makes him a particularly dangerous opponent for anyone in the light heavyweight division. He's tricky. He's a tricky guy. Just how do you train tricky? You understand what I mean? It's a hard thing to train tricky. You know, he, 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 he does an elbow from, from where? I throw a kick from where? It's very hard. The only guy I know who's kind of similar is Anderson Silva. You know, you don't know what anything means. Does it mean he's going to kick? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does. So for any of these guys who are coming up against John, it's, it's a tall order. They, obviously, they've got to be like, yeah, I, want to, I, I, think I, I think I got it. But it's, you don't know what's coming. You don't know, you know a, a good John Jones is coming. You know he's going to be strong. You know, I, we know all those things as coaches. But when you're in the actual move, it's a chess game. And maybe with John, it's, it's a coin toss. Like, well, what's going to happen? And that's hard for them to train. Despite all the hype, Jones understands that the sport is still growing, and he remains humble and willing to learn from those around him. You know, you can go through school, you can go through religion, you can go through anything, and you, you get patterns. This is something that you can't master. You know, you can read the whole Bible and, and have a strong understanding for what it is. There's no one that can master mixed martial arts, you know. When I'm getting really sick when I'm Muay Thai and my timing's just perfect, I realize I'm on a takedown defense or my takedowns are getting sloppy. You know, when my takedowns and my wrestling's feeling real strong, I'm like, man, I haven't been working my guard passes. I haven't been working my jiu-jitsu like I should. So this is a sport that no one can master, you know. It's like we're all babies in this sport. It's like a, it's like a, never-ending ladder that we're trying to climb up and that's what wakes me up in the morning just knowing how much I don't know. With a win on Saturday night Jones will move one step closer to a crack at the light heavyweight crown. He has a tall order ahead of him however as Bader is hell-bent on keeping his unblemished record intact. It's an explosive light heavyweight showdown with potential championship implications but only one hungry shark will move further up the ladder by cementing their spot as a possible title contender in the talent-rich division. John, two of the fastest rising light heavyweights in the UFC are going to collide this Saturday. John Jones and Ryan Bader. When this fight was originally made, I remember you were not a big fan of this idea of I. Joe Silva to put these two rising prospects together. That's exactly uh, right because, you know, you kill one of your rising stars. I think Bader, uh, huge momentum with that win over Noguera. So I think you should take the easy road. I know they say not to go back down after you face a guy the level of Noguera, but you know the this is a guy that really could make a run at the 205 pound title. I don't think now's the right time. Whereas John Jones seems to be unstoppable. He has extremely well-rounded skills. He's explosive, he's athletic, he's entertaining. And uh, I think that's why he's gonna absolutely run through Ryan Bader. And if he does run through Ryan Bader, I think that you've kind of broken the will of Ryan Bader. And we just hope that uh, he can rebound if it is a devastating loss. Now, I really feel that John Jones represents the perfect storm to stop Ryan Bader here. An incredible reach, 84 and a half inches here the biggest in the UFC against Ryan Bader who is someone that we know he is going to shoot for that takedown and standing with Jones I don't care how much confidence he has after that Keith Jardine fight or Noguera that's a mistake to get into with Jones and not just that I mean Jones took out Matashenko took out uh, Hamill two good wrestlers so I think Bader is going to be in tough uh, of course the the momentum of the uh, the Jardine and Noguera fights will add to his uh, his fire but uh, I don't think it makes a difference I think Jones is just too aggressive too explosive and apparently he's been uh, training hard with Andre Arlovsky and they've been beating each other up so it's gonna be a very tough test for for Ryan Bader so your pick and John Jones second round stoppage I'm going with a Sparta kick <laughs> with the absorption of the WEC organization it brings to the UFC the world-class bantamweight division and two of the top 135 pound fighters will meet Saturday night with former champion Miguel Torres a veteran of 41 professional bouts yielding 38 victories making his debut in the UFC when he takes on 18 and 6 Antonio Benuelos. Torres snapped a two-fight losing skid this past September submitting Charlie Valencia at WEC 51 on the same card that Benuelos earned a unanimous decision over Chad George. 
When we come back, we'll take a look at the preliminary card action set for Saturday night, featuring the cowboy Donald Cerrone, Chad Mendez, and the UFC debut of Norafumi Kid Yamamoto.